So Jeff, why do you think that sailing is such an important sport to help disabled people? I think sailing is important because it's a great leveller. It's one of the few sports that I know where anyone, and I mean anyone with any disability, can actually get out on the water, whether it's sailing or whether it's power boating or, or whatever, it's being on the water that's important. Um, and I think, as most people know, you just need the first two people to get on the water and they're going to start racing each other. So uh, there's a great deal of um, building confidence getting on the water um, and just feeling at one with nature. Can you describe the sense of freedom and confidence that disabled people get when sailing? It's a sense you hear a lot of people say that they're, they're leaving their disability on the dock and it's genuinely how I felt. I mean, my, I was a professional yachtsman. I had an accident some 30 years ago and thought I'd never get back in a boat again and uh, it was seven years later I got back in a boat and I suddenly re-found this freedom that, you know, it, it reminded me of how much I loved being on the water. And of course, when you're in a, on a boat, no one's telling you to go left or go right, go faster, go slower. You can you know, you can make your own choices. And it's one of the few sports where you can genuinely sail on equal terms with, with the greatest sailors. We're talking about everyday people getting out on the water, um, overcoming their disabilities, enjoying it, having fun. That is a million miles away from Paralympic competition. But why do you think it's now important to move on and get sailing back into the Paralympics? Well, you've got to remember that you don't get the Paralympics end without the grassroots at the bottom. So unless you're actually getting in the youngsters just for a bit of fun and a bit of you know entertainment and smashing about on the boat, you're never ever gonna get that elite end of the sailing spectrum. It's, you know, what do they say? The cream always rises to the top. So you've gotta have that grassroots level for it to, um, to permeate up to the elite. And of course, once you get the elite level, you start getting role models. You start getting inspirational figures that people, whether you're disabled or not, can aspire to. And, you know, they're inspired by what they've achieved. And can I use sailability as an example? We were a small charity formed in the mid-1990s. We had a handful of disabled sailors in the UK. In 1996, we had the first ever Paralympic sailing event in Atlanta, and Andy Castle and his team won the gold medal for us. Immediately following that, we had thousands, tens of thousands of disabled people in the UK wanting to try sailing. And that was a direct result as having a role model, an inspirational figure who they wanted to emulate. So yes, it is a million miles away, but it's very important for the sport that we have these role models so that we get this grassroots sailing um, and they can then follow a pathway up to be you know, like their heroes. You mentioned 1996 and the introduction of sailing to, to the Paralympics. You were part of the, the team, the group of people who fought to get it into the Paralympics. How did you feel 20 years or so later when it lost that status? That moment when in January 2015 I saw that message an announcement by IPC that sailing was out. I, first of all, I didn't believe it. I had to make my own inquiries. Um, and I felt sick to the pit of my stomach. And the reason I felt so upset, as you rightly say, I was involved in a small way, not a big way. There were more those that were far more involved than me. But I was involved in a small way, getting sailing accepted as a, a demonstration port in sport in 1996. So I'd seen the amount of passion and belief that had gone into that. I then witnessed, you know, we went from there to Sydney and it got stronger and then to Beijing and then, sorry, to Athens and then Beijing and then in London, which was ultimately the pinnacle, you know, of, of our sport, watching sailing. We now had three classes in this elite Paralympic event. It was brilliant. London was the absolute pinnacle of what we had achieved. And I'd witnessed it grow and I one was thinking, where can we go from here? How can we get any better? And then to find it was it was taken away from us was just it felt wrong. Um, it felt a sense of injustice. And then of course we needed to understand why it went wrong. Well we are where we are, so what needs to be done going forward? 
we are where we are and let's make no mistake there is a threshold that the IPC have set for 32 countries to be participating as far as we're aware we would I think hand on heart we could say there's 26 27 nations participating we are where we are in knowing that in 18 months time IPC will make a decision as to whether sailing will be reinstated for 2024 we don't know where those Paralympics are yet but we know that we know that 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 is the state we are where we are because we know that world sailing has um, inherited a lot of problems not just in disabled sailing but from its own point of view it's had some challenges to overcome recently where we are now is we have Andy as our new chief executive world sailing have appointed Massimo as our para world sailing manager and world sailing have made it absolutely clear that they will um, throw some money at this to get reinstatement world sailing know how important it is for the world of sailing that para para sailing is included in the paralympics we've got 18 months to get sailing back we've got 18 months to demonstrate to ipc that we can have increased those numbers to the magic 32 maybe more but for the moment it's 32 and that's not just 32 nations sailing IPC want to see 32 nations with a, a plan, a development plan, a strategic plan to get sailing integrated, a pathway to get sailors from the very lowest, I talked about that bottom of the pyramid, grassroots sailors through to Paralympic elite level sailing. That's a lot of work to do in 18 months. What can we do to make that happen? We've, we, the world, MNAs around the world have got to give world sailing every support they can to try and get this back as back to a place where sailing can be approved and do you have confidence in world sailing that they will do the right things and the wider sailing community and sports bodies can can do that i'm confident that world sailing have made this a priority i'm confident that they are throwing everything at it they can so to speak in my heart I can't think the unthinkable. The unthinkable is that in 18 months time we wouldn't have made the cut. I can't even begin to allow myself to think that. So we just have to think we're going to do it. And we're going to have to do it, not just for the, for the greater good of world sailing and getting us back in the Paralympics, but without those role models, without those inspirational figures, those heroes, there will be no grassroots sailing. Make no mistake, they will not be there. So we've got a mountain to climb, and can I make a suggestion? We know that we've got to get at least four or five more countries sailing. Some of those countries, we know who these emerging nations are. Some of them will be closer to making the cut than others. Why not allow those MNAs, those nations that are mature, that have great development programs, Great Britain, Australia, America, to maybe partner, mentor, some of these emerging nations that are close to making the cut allow the world's MNAs that do have mature sailing programs for disabled people to help make that happen and that's I know the RYA in the UK are offering that and I'm sure other MNAs would offer the same that at least would help us get over the threshold of 32 nations once we're at that point then that's the time to take breath and look at where we go from here Certainly the management of the previous IFDS um, is, has some serious answers to question, uh, questions to answer. You might say, why go back? Why, why, are we, why are we looking at what went wrong? I think it's important to look at what went wrong, to understand those mistakes so we don't make them in the future. I'm pleased that World Sailing are having, um, World Sailing are having a vote in November to look at the composition of the Para World Sailing Committee. Um, we have Massimo now who's the, the World Sailing's Para World Sailing Manager and we've got a great Chief Executive who's made it a priority and of course the President Carlo Croce has made it a priority to get back into sailing. 
my goodness, let's just throw all of our weight behind this, guys. Let's just make this happen. Three classes of boats in the Paralympics up till now. Where do you stand on that? Do you think we need a change? Well, I've got some pretty radical views. Um, they won't appeal to everybody. Um, but let's, let's be clear where we stand at the moment. IPC give the sport of disabled sailing 80 athlete places, 80. So we currently have three classes, a single person 2.4, two person scud, three person sonar. So some nations like UK, America, Australia, can field six athletes, the one, the two, and the three. Well, you only need to do the maths and work out how are we gonna to get to this magic 32 nations if we persist with having three boats. The way around that is I think we have to cut a class and a bit radical, I say we need to cut the three person sonar. Then we're left with a single person and a two person boat. Should those boats remain the one, the 2.4 and the, and the scud? Well, how about this for an idea? What about making the 2.4 an Olympic class? Because then you can genuinely have Olympic and Paralympic sailors competing in a one class of boat. In the World Championships, which is sailed um, regularly, there's hun you know, hundreds of participants. On several occasions, disabled people have won those World Championships against able-bodied sailors. Get the 2.4 into the Olympics. Then you're left with a single class and a two-person class. And this is probably one of my most radical um, of ideas, is look at the functional classification system as it stands now. It's basically rating between a one and a seven. One is someone like myself who's profoundly disabled, and a seven is someone who may have a, a lower limb missing or have some other less minor disability. Let's get some severely disabled people sailing. I know people who sail using sip and puff. They sail using their breath. Well, I tell you what, in media terms, that is more the jaw on the floor type sailing that the public will just go, my goodness, I didn't know that was possible. Let's get some more of that in the Paralympics. Let's still get our elite sailors sailing technical boats, but let's get some really challenged sailors out there sailing and competing. So what does that look like? Well, it means a 2.4 in the Olympics. It then means that only a single person and a two person boat. How about a boat where profoundly disabled people are sailing it alongside someone else? What those classes are, I've got a view, but I'm going to leave it for the uh, committee to decide. And they will be decided, that equipment will be decided for the next quadrennial cycle at this World Sailing um, AGM. So let's see what comes out of it and let's see if some of my ideas are adopted.